I start. So for the previous two lectures, we focused on uh, discovery for new, new, new physics particles by direct production at, uh, at hydron colliders. So, but as I, w as I said, uh, um, going forward, at least uh, for the LHC in the next 20 years, the, the reach will grow, but uh, it will grow slowly. Okay, there, there's, a, there's a long time and uh, uh, as luminosity accumulates. So, and uh, so yeah, so inevitably I think for LHC, one of the obvious uh, focus for the next 20 years, well, all these uh, new physics uh, search will, will continue, uh, an obvious focus will actually be on making precision measurement. Okay, just measure things better, you know, using more uh, statistics and uh, try to improve uh, systematics and uh, uh, try to measure things better. Uh, in particular, um, there is a, a specific target, right? There is a very specific target. So we discover Higgs boson. We don't really understand this property very well yet and we wanted to measure it as much as possible. Okay, so that's the simple motivation and uh, um, well, I'll, I think uh, if Nima talk about uh, future colliders, he will probably mention somewhat more uh, the motivation from uh, from more theoretical perspective. But I will focus on, you know, uh, the techniques we we'll actually use to, to measure the Higgs properties. And uh, there, as, as many of you know, that uh, there are also new proposals to build uh, uh, future colliders. One of the very important part of it seems to be a, a Higgs factory and this, the purpose is exactly to measure the Higgs property very, very well. So, so, so let, let me, so, so for, the, for this lecture, I think I'm going to first focus on uh, the techniques we use to measure Higgs properties, okay? So, um, so Higgs measurement. We'll do Higgs measurement. Both LHC and uh, and the Higgs factory. Okay. Um, so, talking about precision measurement, it's useful. Obviously, you know, we we would like to measure things as precise as we can, right? On the other hand, uh, uh, doing this. Measurement always, uh, you know, cost money, maybe require a new facility and so on. So it's very good to have some target in mind, how precise we, we want it to be. Okay, so let me just, uh, so target, target accuracy. Okay, so, to this end, if it helps to, to think about what, what is the, so we are, we, are, we are trying to measure some deviations, okay? Or, or some, we're trying to, to, to verify whether it's consistent standard model or have some small deviations. So what is the typical size of a deviation induced by new physics to the Higgs coupling, okay? Of course, this is very model dependent, but you know, very, very roughly, if you think about, I uh, integrate out some uh, new physics at a mass scale, at a mass uh, scale M, and uh, it will induce some higher dimensional operators, and uh, those operators will, will uh, correct the Higgs coupling, okay? So the typical operators, the, the leading order operators comes in uh, dimension six, so the, the coupling is, uh, the correction is suppressed by new physics mass scale square, and the, the other dimension for quantity is a V square, okay? The, the Higgs value square. Or if you want, you can put MW square. For, for, this, uh, for this argument, it doesn't make too much difference, okay? Uh, now, but of course, we can also search for this new physics by, by LHC from, at LHC from direct productions, okay? So, so direct production,
typically probe M around the TEV, as we have seen in a couple of examples we talked about uh, last, last lecture. <coughs> so you put that in, and this is about 5%. Okay, and uh, what does this mean? This means that if I want my precision uh, measurement to beat direct search, you roughly need to get down to 5%. Okay, and prefer preferably much better than 5%. Okay, if you have get to 5%, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's maybe comparable to, in some cases, to, to direct searches. Of course, this is a, this statement uh, can be very model dependent. Okay, so because uh, you, you, there there can be couplings, loop factors, or whatever here. So, um, yeah, and uh, and just also just because a particle that couples to Higgs, its mass is uh, 500 GeV, doesn't mean that you can actually produce them and, and actually see it. Okay, it, it really depends on models. I can certainly make up uh, scenarios that uh, even 200 GeV particle coupled to Higgs, you will never have hope to discover at the LHC. So, um, but so, so yeah. So this means that uh, this is just a rough guide, and uh, we should do this precision measurement and then, no matter what. Even if we can just do it to 10%, it's still very useful. Okay, but th this is sort of the you know just try to guide your eyes. We we're we're aiming for. Uh, Around the five percent to have a, a more comprehensive coverage. Okay. So what are the couplings we can, uh, you know, talk about reasonably measured at the, at the RHC? These are Higgs uh, Higgs uh, VV couplings. Higgs coupling to gauge boson, right? So it looks like uh, something like this. WZ, WZ, um, yeah, three level couplings, and uh, Higgs to fermions, where, where FF bar is usually at the Higgs, at, at the, the LHC, we're talking about the bottom, perhaps not charm. And uh, well, to a much less extent, charm, tau, and uh, maybe we can reach mu. Okay. So, so this is getting more difficult going to to, to lighter fermions, basically because uh, this this Yukawa coupling, as you well know, this Yukawa coupling, is 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 depend depending on the fermion mass. Okay. So it's a uh, it's getting very very small. Okay. So there are also loop couplings, okay? The couplings uh, that are induced by it in the standard model, induced by uh, standard model loops, such as uh, so you have this, okay? And uh, you also have, uh, I guess you have uh, this, yeah. Also, well, it's not just top, but W loop here too, but gamma. Or also Z gamma, for example. Okay, those kind of couplings. Okay. So these are the couplings we will, we, we wish to measure. So so for these loop couplings, uh, it doesn't. Well, also at, at the RGC, I think you can also measure. It, uh, for example, ah, I should say H. To some extent, you can also measure H T T bar. Okay, H H t uh, H to top coupling. Okay. Now you ask, uh, isn't that uh, if I measure the Higgs top coupling, doesn't, doesn't I already know this coupling? The answer is no, because we should treat this in order to you know, actually think about the deviations of standard model, we should treat this as an independent coupling, because uh, there could be other new physics particles running in the loop generates this coupling, okay? So this, that's an independent coupling. This is just a standard model diagram, so is this one. Well, it's a uh, branching ratio is smaller. Tagging C is harder. How are so mostly the Huh? Sorry? How, how the the tau is easier actually than, than charm. Yeah, tau, tau jet is, is quite distinct. 
and also it has some, at, 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 at least the tau semi-leptonic is not too bad, right? So, but you can also, I think you can also do hydronic, hydronic. Um, okay. It's also useful to know something about the branching ratios um, for Higgs decay. So Higgs decay mostly to BB bar at 125. And uh, ah. yeah, it's, I think it's about, so let me, let me be very rough, OK? This, these numbers, I'm sure you can look up. On, these, are, these numbers are all very precisely calculated. So, but for us, let me just, uh, I just need some rough order magnitude uh, sense of this. Higgs to WW off shell. Okay, one of the W of shell is a, let, let me call it 10%, it's slightly more than 10%. Uh, yeah, so then the next layer is Higgs to glue glue, Higgs to uh, tau tau, tau and tau, and the, yeah, so this is, a, this is a several percent. Some, some several percent. And uh, Higgs to, well, Higgs to glue glue actually is close to 10 percent. And the Higgs to charm charm and uh, ZZ star. This is, uh, this is about 3 percent. And the uh, and, uh, Higgs to gamma gamma and that is uh, about 0.2 percent. Okay, and uh, the discovery channels of Higgs, the first uh, channels we convinced that Higgs was discovered is actually this one and this one, okay? Uh, that's because these are very clean. Higgs rate is pretty high, and, uh, but uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it, this is very clean, okay? I don't think we have seen these guys yet, okay? So this, uh, this is probably impossible. This is probably, oh, I shouldn't say impossible, very difficult. And, uh, and this one is, uh, well, I think we've just barely start to see this. Okay, so that tells you how difficult these things are. Okay, so we, and uh, this one, yes, we, we certainly have seen. This is one of the, one of the sort of the, the discovery, also you can, so you can call it a discovery channel. Right? The discovery channels are really these. But the main drivers are these two, because this guy, from a W decay, you actually don't see a resonance. You, you see some broad feature, okay? You only discover it because you know it's there. You know it has to be there, so you, you, you just, uh, you, you work very hard, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, but uh, to leading order, so these two are the dominant decay. No. Sorry, I shouldn't say this is, this is this is way too too much. Yeah, so this is too bad. This is, this number is not very good. So, um, yeah, this is more like a twenty percent. Okay, so it's really dominated by 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 these two. Okay, now let's think about uh, uh, how do we measure Higgs couplings. Okay, so um, of course the 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 obvious uh, the, the exper experiment observable are uh, cross-sections in, in various channels, right? So the, you, you, you see, you measure cross-sections in various uh, production and decay channels. Oh my gosh, who we'll pushed the that high? Okay, so we have, uh, so rate for a channel, okay, where, where Higgs goes to uh, some particular final state is, uh, yeah, so Ri is a cross section for production times branching ratio 
of, of uh, x goes to i. OK? So it's pretty clear. And, uh, and this is uh, uh, gamma total. OK? Is the partial width div divided by the total width times the production cross section. OK? So, OK? Now, in order to measure uh, the deviation, we need uh, some way of uh, parameterizing the, the, the deviations, OK? And uh, there are many ways. And uh, there, there are infinite number of meetings, people arguing about which one is a better, uh, you know, better uh, parameterization. But let, let, me, let, let, me, let me just do the, the, the simplest parameterization. Uh, where it's called the Kappa framework. Okay, yeah. You are assuming narrow width? We're assuming narrow width. Higgs with a few MeV. Okay, so I, I, I'll comment on the width uh, after, after I talk about this, okay? Um, so it, 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 it has this Kappa, basically, is the ratio of. Uh, some Higgs coupling to I divided by its standard model value. Okay. Okay. So kappa equals one is, a, is consistent with standard model, and kappa deviation from one is a BSM. Okay. So that that is this is the simplest way to do this. Okay. So what typically? What are the, the, the relevant couplings? For the Higgs. So we just said are these. So there are G, Z, G, W, and G top, G bottom, G charm, G tau. You can add a G mu on as well. And uh, why don't I just add it? Um, G photon, G gluon, G Z gamma. OK, so these are the, I parameterizing the independent couplings of these guys. OK, I'm, I'm introducing these, these guys. So it, correspondingly, you have kappa Z, kappa W, and so on. Yeah, you can have kappa Z. Kappa W and so on. Okay. Now, there's one more thing we need to keep in mind. So another thing, suppose, well, first of all, ignore. Remember, notice that I ignore the coupling to electron, coupling to U and the D quark to strange quark because they are not possible. Okay, they are basically out of reach. Okay, and. Uh, uh, well, maybe in the really asymptotic future, we'll find a way to measure them. But uh, these are the things we we focus on. Ah, so there is also a if you want, you can add a, a, G, a triple Higgs coupling, for example. Um, there is one more thing. In order to do this uh, do this well, in principle, you see there's also a total width, also the Higgs width. Okay. There is also this guy. Okay. You say, why is that an independent uh, uh, parameter? Because you know, in, I have all these things, right? You know, it modulo some very tiny branching ratios. These, if, if I give you all these couplings, you can calculate the total ways. But notice that we, we, are, we, we, have, we, are, we have to include the possibility that Higgs has some exotic decay mode that we don't know. Okay. And uh, even you actually see some of those decay modes. OK, which great. We discover new physics. But still, there's always the possibility there's some mode you don't see. Maybe just decay in such a way that it's very hard to see. OK? So essentially, I, if you want, I need to include a exotic width. OK? That, that, that is a free parameter. OK? Maybe Higgs decay to dark matter. OK? You don't see that. And, right. So for example. And, uh, but these two are interchangeable. 
OK? So, so usually, typically, we, it's more convenient to use this as a free parameter than this one, OK? So, so basically, you, the ways you calculate using all these plus that is that, OK? So these two are interchangeable. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, they, they contribute to tiny, tiny bit of the width. So, so, so they, they are still, they're actually in the exotic. They are in the, the, the yeah, you can, you can view them either in the in exotic, but, uh, you know, you, you, it's not important. It's not an important contribution to the exotic. Yeah. Um, okay. And, and by the way, if you decay, you, you discover some uh, Higgs, you actually discover some Higgs decay exotic mode, you can just add it here, okay? This is, uh, should be understood, always parameterizing something that we haven't seen yet. Okay. So typical process. How should I do this? So typical process. Oh, okay, this doesn't need to be very long. So maybe maybe I'll write it here. Um, so typical process are these. So glue fusion to Higgs. This this produces most of the Higgs, right? So and uh, this guy can go to I, some final state, where I can be can be Z, W, gamma, you know, tau, B, although B is not observable in this, uh, in this channel, because uh, it's, well, so you have a, you have a, it's just a, a 50 GeV-ish B jet, okay, so, so the, the QCD background is overwhelming at this, at this energy, so you, you cannot even trigger on Bs in, in this channel, okay. So, but these are the useful channels. And uh, so, typically we can, de we can define something called the mu G i. So G means that it's coming from glue fusion. I means it's the final state. And this is uh, the, basically the rate of uh, glue, glue goes to H goes to I divided by its standard model value, okay? Okay, this is just the rate deviation. And uh, using, using our uh, kappa parameterization, using our kappa parameterization, parameterization, you see this is proportional to kappa G, kappa I square. Yeah. Why is this particularly difficult to detect B in this channel? Because usually then you have some chance of distinguishing B jets. Right. But, uh, you know, you, you. This is too big. Okay. It's so big that you cannot even afford to trigger on B jet in this channel. Okay, because B jet is not hardy enough. Okay, QCD die jet triggers at least is uh, several hundred GeV, couple hundred GeV. Okay. Okay, so this depends on that. Okay, but if you write this out, you will see that it also depends on the, uh, the ratio of the width, okay? It also depends on total width, okay? So let, let me not write it out. This also depends on total width, naively, okay? This also depends on total width, okay? You, you, can, you can work it out. It's a, there's a dependence on the total width, okay? And uh, 
So therefore, just measure this ratio is not a clean measurement of this, this combination. It, it is already a combination. It's not individual measurement. But even for this combination, it's not a clean measurement. Because this, this also depends on the total width. Because if you want to you imagine you start to shift in kappa, you're also shifting the total width. Okay? And uh, there's also uh, unknown exotic width and so on. So, so it's uh, just measure this thing is not a measurement of the this coupling yet, but also it depends on total width. Okay. So therefore, in order to, at least uh, at this stage, you can already see that in order to make a clean measurement, what we, the cleanest we want is, a, is, is some kind of a model independent measurement. It right? doesn't depend on what my assumptions about total width and so on. So we need to figure out a way. It would be great if we can figure out a way to measure Higgs width. Okay, and uh, um, but unfortunately, Higgs width is a. Uh, let's see, it's uh, it's about uh, two point something MeV. Right. Okay. It's a several MeV. Okay, that's just, uh, I, may, I may not read uh, the figure correctly. So it's, it's, but it automatically is a couple MeV. And, uh, and the this is way smaller than any res the, the resolution of any of those final state particles where we can actually see a resonance. Okay, this is uh, way smaller than the resolution This means that in any channel, you see a Higgs peak in the environment's environment mass distribution of some final state particles. Okay, I don't know. I mean, this can be, this can be gamma gamma. This can be zz goes to four lepton and so on. Okay, it doesn't matter. So, so this is completely that the width of this peak is completely dominated by your experimental resolution. Okay, it has nothing to do with the Higgs intrinsic. Uh, uh, width. So this is not a way to measure width. So can we try to measure width at the at RHC? So there is a there's one thing. So people proposed. Yeah, let me just briefly mention it. Okay. So it's 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 by thinking again about uh, about. Uh, this channel, but uh, Higgs goes to ZZ. Okay, Z can goes to four leptons. So let's let's write it out. Okay, so this cross section sorry, is Some number. Well, let, let me let me just write it. Uh, in the, um, okay. Z is some uh, is some known function of central mass energy. Okay, so so in generically that so the cross section for G G goes to H goes to Z Z star goes to four lepton is this. Okay. Oh, well, multiply uh, the branching ratio of Z goes to leptons. So, but that that that's that's. That's well known. Okay, so and this is the propagator. Okay, so the the trick is uh, so if I just uh, again say okay I'm going to uh, measure it on shell, then we, I, I I go back to my earlier uh, argument here. Okay, I, I it's not by itself it's not an independent measurement of the of the width. Okay, That's, uh, this all it depends on too many for free parameters. 
Okay, but the idea is to look at in two regime. The first regime is I look at uh, it uh, off shell. In the case where s hat is bigger than m h square, okay. I'm just going to look at the off shell. I'm not going to look at the peak, peak area. There is still some event rate when when this is a when this is a, this channel is off shell. And in this case, sigma hat is a roughly k kappa kappa z square. This function okay because uh, it's 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 dominated by by this term sorry I'm missing a square somewhere here yeah so it's dominated by 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 this term basically okay and uh, and then I can also, of course, I will measure it on shell, where the full lepton actually reconstruct the Higgs resonance. And uh, this means that the S hat equals, uh, in on shell regime, this is kappa g square, kappa z square, m h gamma h is this okay with you and uh, th this is obtained by the so called narrow width approximation basically a narrow width approximation says that uh, this pro propagator When gamma is very small, becomes uh, becomes this. Becomes a delta function. I mean, this is actually one of the ways to define delta functions. You, you, you take a bright Wigner and uh, shrink the width. Of this is one of way to define delta functions. And uh, you have to be a little bit careful with the prefactor. Once you use that, you, you, you get this. OK? So I have these two measurements. So sorry, I should say this is off and then this is on. And the idea is to take the ratio of these two. Okay, take the, take a pro appropriate ratio of these two, and because all these are known functions, so you you show you can show that if I take the ratio of these two, is approximately, basically it's just a sigma. Well, it's proportional to sigma off shell over sigma on shell. The, the proportionality constant depends on MH and so on, but you know everything else cancels. So kappa G, kappa Z cancel. Okay, so that's uh, that's one way of trying to model independently measure width without uh, even in the you know with with modifications of those vertices. So the, the unfortunately. Unfortunately, to measure this is very difficult. Okay, to see this is very difficult. Uh -huh. we, we have not seen this yet. We have not seen the Higgs produced off shell yet. Obviously, of course, we have seen a lot of ZZ at, with, with a larger invariant mass going to four leptons. But uh, none of them is probably coming from the off shell Higgs yet. Cross 
Well, so, so the key thing, I think, I, the key thing here is that the disk quantity depends on gamma. This quantity doesn't. Okay? And, uh, and the, the kappas cancel. Yes, but no, the, and then the rest is just a matter of choice. Okay? I can, I can choose, I integrate over, integrate from 200 to, to the end of my energy bin or, or not. Okay, or I, can, or I can take a part of it and so on. Right? It's a matter of choice, but the, there's, it, that, that just goes into some uh, known pro 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 proportionality numbers here. Right? So. All right. Unfortunately, we haven't, we have not even seen this yet, okay? So, but nevertheless, even though you haven't seen it, just by the fact that you haven't seen it, you can set a limit on, on the gamma already, okay? Because, uh, because if, uh, if, the, if, the, if this width is actually huge, uh, big, you know, you, 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 you will get, uh, yeah. If this is very big, you see, you will get a big enhancement of this ratio. Okay, so you can already set a limit. So the current limit, just by the fact that we haven't seen it yet, is Higgs width should be less than about five times the standard model width. Okay, about, okay, because I say about because this is a, certainly a very, very difficult measurement. Even this one is a very difficult measurement. Okay, you, you're looking at some smooth ZZ distribution. Okay, trying to pick out uh, some little excess on top of it. Yeah. Assuming same colliders. Yeah. Why should I expect this systematics can provide a more precision than just trying to measure the right wing shape? You can try. <laughs> no, that, that the other one is is orders magnitude off. Right, the other one is like it's MEV. The resolution is, I would say, at least is a, is a GEV. Right, so that's a three order magnitude. Here, as, yeah, this is a good question. Here is that you, you, you're you looking at your, your ZZ background and you're trying to see something like this, okay? The systematics is also very important. I don't remember the projection for high luminosity RHC for this, one, this guy, but you, apparently you don't really quite Im you don't really improve on this number that much, okay? Which is consistent with what you're saying. You know, you, you, you are still have some limit of a factor of several. You know, in the end, we are not going to, I think the bottom line I want to say is, is that in the end, we are not going to measure Higgs width. At least not very well at LHC, okay, with, with huge error bars, with, with model independent. So this means, this means that any Higgs measurement that you, you, you wanted to do at LHC, you have to make an assumption, okay? Assumption about the width, okay? So there are many ways of making assumptions and uh, you can look it up from uh, some Higgs working group, uh, uh, LHC Higgs working group report and so on. And, but let me just show you one way of making a assumption, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular way of making assumptions. Okay. Let's, uh, what do I do? Maybe I can just do it here. One way of making assumptions is that assume no exotic decay. Okay? That's one way of making assumptions. Uh, again, I emphasize this doesn't, it's, it's a slightly different from assuming I, sh I would not search for exotic decay, okay? This means that there's no, no unseen decays of the Higgs, okay? I'm not missing any decay mode, at least not missing any significant decay mode of, uh, you know, even though I'm missing H2EE and so on, they don't really change the total width, 
okay? So, but um, I don't miss any significant decay mode. All right? And uh, so let me give you an example how, how you actually try, can try to do something in this, in this, uh, in this, with this assumption. Okay? So let's try to try extracting kappa glue. Okay? I'm going to try to extract this coupling. You say, it's easy, I measure the total production rate. Unfortunately, you cannot, okay. Again, this is, you know, you, 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 we haven't seen many decay, decay mode yet, okay. Um, we, we, in particular, we haven't seen the BB mode yet in this production, so, so we, we're missing most of the, the rate in this channel. So we, you cannot do it like that. Um, so let's try, okay. But with this assumption, with this assumption, I'm all, uh, I can, now I can write uh, the, the total rate, okay? Total width. My total width is just all the standard model uh, ones, but I, I'm going to simplify my life even further, okay? I'm just going to, this is, this is a way of doing pencil paper. Uh, actually, you do it, you do a global fit, but let, let, me, let me try to do this. With pencil paper level, let me, let me only include the, the most important uh, contribution to, to, the, to the partial width, okay? Just the V and this. And by gamma V, I mean gamma W plus gamma Z, okay? I just mean that, but it's dominated by gamma W, okay, by, by, by far, right? okay? Now, now in this framework, let, let, let's, write, uh, let, let's write these things out uh, slightly more carefully. Let, 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 me, let me write this, uh, this out slightly more carefully, okay? So what do I have? I have mu glue Z. This is going to be kappa glue square. Um, well, gamma glue over gamma glue, sorry, omer, sorry, uh, ah, wrong. Gamma Z over gamma V plus gamma B, okay? Okay. Oh, let, why, why don't I, why don't I now, 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 I'm going to make a further assumption. Okay, so just to simplify my, my life, you don't, you don't need to do that, okay? You, you, you can assume kappa W is equal to kappa Z, okay? Let's say the, the modification on the W and Z are the same, okay? That, that, that's, that is an assumption that uh, people frequently make because it seems to be a good assumption based on custodial symmetry of the standard model. Higgs should couple to the uh, W, Z in the same way, okay? So that, so in this case, then I can even, I can, I will just do this, okay? I'll say this is the total cross-section to W and Z, and, uh, and uh, this is this, okay? So that will be, and, uh, okay? Now, this, this is going to be divided by gamma V standard model over gamma uh, V standard model plus gamma B standard model, sorry, BB bar, standard model, okay? Is this okay? So the, the, there's a production rate, cross-action ratio, it's, it's, it's captured in this kappa square, okay? You, you, sh you should try it yourself, okay? This is a, and uh, in the, with the same vein, so you can calculate this quantity, glue to B, okay? The cross-section to glue to B, and uh, that is going to be um, again, kappa G square, I'm going to write this uh, in, a, in a slightly better way, okay? So gamma B 
over gamma v plus gamma v divided by well, the gamma v standard model over gamma v standard model plus gamma v standard model. Okay, this is a, this is a common fact. Okay. So first thing you notice that I can add these two together. Okay, I can I can add these two together, and uh, uh, no, I cannot. Uh, well, I can add the the, the, the upstairs together. <laughs> I can add the upstairs together. Okay. Huh? I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, sorry. Forget about downstairs for the moment. I'll add these two together. Okay. Let me add these two terms together. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm changing my definitions, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. And uh, uh, plus. G B is kappa G square. Okay? If I just add these two together. Uh, let's see. Where, where do I come from this? Now, based on that, but okay, so that, that looks like a, a measurement of kappa g, except I cannot measure the the, 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 the second term in on the right left hand side, okay? Because as I said, you I, you you don't do glue glue fusion to BB bar, you cannot measure that, okay? But but we notice that uh, you notice that uh, this is a uh, this is this combination, okay? So let's try replace that combination with something else, okay? Let's try that, okay? I'm going to claim, okay? You can check, and I hope I'm not wrong. Is this is? Uh, let me write it. Then I then I then I will explain what that is. Okay. V V B Okay. So let me let me explain what mu V means. Okay. Mu V gamma or mu V I. I'm defining it uh, as as another different process. Okay, so this is a G, no, no, this is a QQ bar. This is the Hickstrom process, okay? Z or W with H goes to I. Okay, so these are the mu's, but defined with, 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 with that, that process. Okay? Okay. Unlike this one, you cannot measure. You can actually measure this combination. Okay, everything in this one you can measure. Okay, this is glue glue to Higgs to gamma. Gamma. This is this is Higgs Cholon to BB bar. This is Higgs Cholon to to gamma. Okay, all of these are measurable. Okay. Why? Just without why in the first place. It's a QCD background is too big. Okay, so 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 you have a QCD background that's orders magnitude bigger than that. With with a 50 GeV B quark. Okay, I don't think you you you, you don't even trigger on that. Okay, so it's so it's it's below the trigger threshold. So the event you throw away. Yeah.
Yeah, so, so you, you, can, you can check. <coughs> this vertex we know, okay? You assume this is a standard model, at least. Well, also, this vertex cancels in this ratio, okay? And also, a lot of systematics cancel, cancel in, in, this, in, the, in, in a ratio like this. Okay, so this is a particularly good way of, of proceed, okay? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to replace this with that. Okay, that's, that's my kappa glue extraction. Okay, one way to do it. Okay, and uh, it turns out the mu g gamma, for example, can be measured down to about 5%. Okay, having to multiply this ratio make it worse, okay, somewhat worse. And uh, mu g v, the, the one that, uh, so sorry, this is, this is all three inverse set of arm. We're all talking about three inverse set of arm uh, territory, okay. Uh, mu g v is about eight, you know, seven, eight percent at the three inverse set of arm, okay. So, so then you added error in those quadrature and so on. And the, uh, I haven't done this in detail, at least, but, but I, I'm, get, I'm going to guess in this case, delta kg, delta kappa g you get from this one is about 10%. Okay? Um, maybe slightly better than that, okay? Um, so this is one way. I, I, I just want to use this example to show you that that's the gymnastic sort of you wanted to do. To, to, to convince yourself you can do some extraction of those kappas, okay? Of course, when you actually do it, you don't really do it this way, okay? You, you just do a global fit. So, the, the, so you, you, you decide a number of free parameters and uh, you, you fit to a bunch of rate, okay? That, 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 that's what you do. And, uh, but the, the, the exercise like this helps convince you that you are not fooled by your fit. Okay, this is, you say, oh, I get a 8%, how can I do it? And it's at, least, at least if I just don't, even I don't do the fit, I follow only one pass, I get pretty close. Of course, there are additional channels can contribute to the accuracy of this. I think the ultimate, pro, ultimate projection for, for delta kappa g at the three inverse edel bar is actually about 5%, okay? It's not too bad, okay, it's a, well, I don't know. Remember our target, okay. Um, it's, not, it's not terrible, but, uh, uh, but again, re remember, it does rely on our assumption of the total width, okay? We, we do have to make that assumption. Mm. Yeah, so let me just uh, briefly summarize a few things. So, yeah, so for example, for the delta kappa z, and uh, the, 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 the error on these two guys are roughly the same, it's also 5%. 5% seems to be some kind of magic number. So it's a three inverse out of one, so yeah. Then you have to add on top of it. Just well, it's quadrature or something. Yeah, you, you, yeah. Um, so that these two are probably the best measured. Uh, it's actually, you know, I think. Uh, so, so the best measured one is actually this: kappa z over kappa gamma. This ratio, that's the best measured one. It's about 2%, okay? That's, that's probably the best measured one, okay? Another uh, comment is that the, uh, going from, uh, going from uh, the, the LHC a, a few years from now to, to, to 20 years from now, uh, inclu in increase the precision of these things by a factor of two, okay? So if you, if you, uh, if you compare these corrections to this accuracy to the accuracy LHC will achieve in a few years, it's about a factor of two, roughly speaking. And, uh, and uh, well, the statistics goes by a factor of 10, 
So, so, so it's not, you, you see that it's not really scaling with, uh, strictly with the statistics, so it means that uh, there are systematics dominating, okay? Okay. All right. So, next, let's talk about uh, Higgs coupling measurement at, uh, at, uh, at uh, Higgs factories, okay? So, So Higgs factories, the, the, let's, let's go over how you produce uh, Higgs first at the Higgs factory. There's no gluons, so you, have, you basically produce it with, with this one. This is, the, the, this is the leading channel, okay? So yeah, for, for, the, for the moment, let, let's, let's focus on a Higgs factory with central mass energy around the 250 GeV. As I had already said the last time, the, the 250 GeV is, uh, is, is where the, so this is the cross section of ZH Higgs the 250 GeV is where the, 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 the maximum cross section is, okay? So this is the center of mass energy. Um, okay, so this is how you, how you produce them. Now, how do you identify Higgs? How do you identify Higgs? You would think that I, I will go through something like, a, you know, similar to what Hadron Collider does. You know, you, you, you try to see Higgs decay product, you, you go, okay? But it's not, that's not the way. That's the key difference, okay? That's not the way to do it, okay? The way to do it is, let, let, me, let me focus on this mode, okay? Let's say C goes to L plus L minus. The way to do it is to, to fall, form the following thing, so which we call recoil mass square, which is uh, S hat minus, so take the energy of these two system, okay? The E L L means that the E L L is E L plus plus E L minus. Okay, the, the, the energy of these two minus, uh, well, the ve vector sum of their, their momentum, okay? No, that is wrong again. Okay, and uh, let's see, what, what, what do I mean by that? Okay, what this is, what this is, is uh, as I hope you recognize, this one is essentially the full momentum of this guy minus the full momentum of this guy. Okay, the full momentum, momentum of this guy is uh, you know, E zero, 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 right? So, because this is a central mass frame, okay? This is the, the, the you know, at e plus E minus collider, lab frame is the central, central mass frame, okay? It's just a, yeah, is this okay? This is the form, the difference between these two form momentum. But the form momentum, this guy minus the form momentum of this guy is the form momentum of this guy, okay? So this is essentially the full momentum of Higgs, okay? So this is a, essentially the full momentum of Higgs square, okay? So, so you, you know that it's going to be equal to mh square with, with the resolutions, okay? So if you make a figure, make a plot of this recoil mass,
Yeah. If you make a plot of this guy, you will see something like a, this is M Higgs. Okay. So that's how you tag Higgs. You see a pair. You, you see a leptons reconstruct the Z, and you form the for, a recoil mass, and you you make a, and then you pick the event where the recoil mass falls into the, the Higgs mass window. Okay, this is how you tag Higgs at the at the, at the Higgs factory. Um, right. So let's see. So first of all, you notice that I have not referred to the decay at all. Okay, so immediately you, you conclude from that this is very, going to be a very different game than the hadron collider. I don't need to do that gymnastics. Okay, so the, to to get to it. Okay, so I I measure this coupling immediately. I know the total cross section, independent of decay. Okay, so I just do that, and uh, well, second of all, obviously I cannot do this at hadron colliders. Okay, because you don't know you don't know the central mass frame. Uh, energy at hydron collider. I cannot do this. It doesn't work. Okay, so that's the special thing about the about Higgs collider. Higgs, uh, not the Higgs collider, but the Higgs factories. Yeah. Sorry, so I say that question again. Right, but there, right on the face, right on the threshold, the cross section is zero. Okay, and uh, because as I said, d pi two is proportional to to the p of the particle, basically. Okay, the, the two body phase space is proportional to the to the momentum of the particle you actually produce. Okay, so it opens up slowly. It opens up, not, not slowly, but it opens up, but it, it, it's zero at the, at the threshold, it will, it will go like this. Okay, and, but on the, on, on, on the very high energy side, it goes like one over S. So the peak is 250. Okay. Um, Okay, now, what do I want to say? Ah, so I can say a few more things. So first of all, so, so this is, a, so immediately you, you see this give you a model independent extraction uh, measurement of, uh, of kappa z, okay? So this is actually the best measured number from all the Higgs factories, okay? This is the, the, the flagship measurement. You, know, you, 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 you will try to do everything with this measurement, okay? Huh? Yeah, hopefully you will, you will see that in some other channel. Okay, you wanted to try to mess this up, you can try, but uh, you hopefully you will see that in some other channel. Yeah. Um, perhaps I can save. Now, Higgs factory will also be able to do other things, okay? So you, you can see that, uh, for example, I can do, do this. I can focus on this channel. 
ju just to just to tell you a few things, okay? So you can you can you can do this, right? I don't care how the z decays, but then I can also look for the Higgs decay to zz star. Okay, it's a bit of statistically challenging, but because this is a this is a, a small branching ratio. But if I if I can measure this channel, you see that um, the, the total Higgs width is proportional to uh, the partial width of Higgs goes to zz star divided by branching ratio of Higgs to zz star. Well, th this is equal. Okay, this is just a definition of partial. Uh, this is just a definition of uh, of that. But this guy is proportional to sigma zh. Okay, this is this is basically the Higgs z coupling. In order to calculate this, you only need to know Higgs z coupling. But Higgs z coupling is going to be model independently determined by by this thing I just pushed away by this. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, the branching ratio of Higgs to ZZ star. Okay. And this you can also measure. Okay. Absolute uh, with absolute value because the the way you to do it again you, you you tag all the Higgs already. Right? Then you just count the number of ZZ event. You, you, you measure that branching ratio. OK? So th this is also measured, and then this is measured. So you, you get a model independent measurement of width, the, the one that we, you know, we cannot quite get to in the, in the standard model. Okay? Again, but the, the statistics of this is a little bit limited, so you, do, you cannot do it very, very well. And, uh, but you know, nevertheless, it is a measurement. Um, another way of measuring Higgs width is to do this so-called VBF channel with BB bar. Okay, e e e plus e minus channel with a BB bar, and uh, that. You see that gamma total equals gamma h to bb bar over branching ratio h to bb bar. And that is proportional to sigma, well, this is VBF. To BB bar divided by let me branching ratio okay so what this does is that this is the same and this ratio this ratio is basically the this coupling, basically. Okay. So so this one takes out the this coupling. Okay. That's another way of measuring Higgs waves. Okay. Um, and this one, it turns out to be very useful, especially at a higher energy. Uh, e plus e minus colliders. So, so for example, if you have a ILC at 500 GeV, and this one can be a very useful measurement. Okay, it's not as statistics limited as a, as a, as a, as, as this one. Yeah. No. Again, not. Even in left hand collider. Even in left hand collider. The, the resolution, again, you, know, you, you don't get much better than, than, than GEV, basically. 
Okay, even at the lepton collider. So imagine, so what's the resolution you need? You need 10 to the minus 5. Okay? At most, you get, a, you know, I don't know, maybe 0.1%. So I'm saying the resolution, that's already, yeah. But I think yeah. I can understand a high one kind of resolution, one GB is roughly well, so this scale, but why this is really It's not just the environment, right? You, 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 you know, in order to me measure muon momentum, you need uh, magnets and uh, big uh, things, and in order to measure electron momentum, you need to, you know, understand precisely how electron showers, and, uh, right? So, so I think, uh, it, it's not just because the hadron collider is dirty. Yeah. It, it's true that the lepton collider can actually measure those things better. I don't think anybody has dreamed about uh, uh, to do it directly. Um, yeah, so let me just uh, quote some numbers. So the model independent determination of this at, uh, you know, at the uh, Circular uh, fact, uh, Higgs factories is about a point two percent. Okay, so did I erase my formula? Yeah, I didn't. Okay, so this is a factor of uh, twenty at least better than this. Okay, better than what LHC can do. Okay, the translate into mass scale. This is a factor of at least five or six above what the LHC. So, so this is usually, if you if if I just roughly adopting this uh, this 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 way of uh, estimating, this is a new physics at uh, you know six six ish TeV. Okay, this is out of reach at LHC. Okay, so so there's a, there's a clean way you can at least uh, you know, I haven't talked about any motivations. Okay, what what the, what Higgs coupling uh, measurement can, t can, can tell you, but, uh, but uh, even this is already, you know, tells you that uh, th this, that, that's why this measurement is worth doing, because it's doing something that LHC, you know, obviously beyond the LHC, in terms of probing new physics scales. Okay. Um, yeah, what else I wanted to... Um, so yeah, so there are a few more Higgs couplings we, we haven't uh, talked about, okay? So there are, so among them, perhaps the most important one is, uh, is, is this. Triple Higgs coupling, okay? So, Well, I guess if Nima talk about the future collider, he will probably give you more motivations about this triple Higgs coupling, but uh, it's very useful to measure it very well, okay? So let me just, uh, uh, for example, if you want to distinguish, you know, this is the usual, usual way the Higgs potential looks like, okay? But we actually don't know that whether this is the potential or not. What we actually know is just this, this part of the potential. We know it's VEV, we know it's mass. Okay, it could be this, but it can also be something like uh, something like this. I didn't draw it very well. Yeah. Could be something like this with with more wiggles. Okay, so the this is for example feeds into the question about whether electric wave phase transition is first order or not, for example. Okay, so the one one way you wanted to see whether it's this picture or that picture is to actually try to measure, uh, measure the third derivative of the potential, which is this one, okay? Um, so what does, uh, how, how do we do this? Uh, so at hadron colliders, and uh, this is very difficult, okay? This is very, very difficult. Because, uh, well, you can certainly imagine, how about I do this? Okay? Yes, it's, it's, it's there, but the rate is much smaller than the single Higgs production. Okay? I remember we, we, we have, this is 2 to 2 rather than 2 to 1. So at least uh, there is a few order magnitude smaller than the, uh, than the single Higgs production, but there's also, in the standard model, just to make the things harder, in the standard model, there's also another diagram. 
Okay. Moreover, they they they, they destructively interfere. So, uh, yeah. So it's a, even though even if you see dihex production, which is not clear, we are going to see it or not at RHC. Even if you see it, you have to disentangle this to 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 pep, to, to claim it's a measurement. So. The projections for LHC vary, um, but let, let me just call it 100 percent. Okay, there are numbers uh, bigger, much bigger than that. There's numbers somewhat smaller than that. Let me just call it 100 percent. Okay, so if this coupling is twice uh, as the standard model prediction, LHC may see a you know one two sigma hint of it. Okay, that's what LHC can do, and. Uh, so one way to, to do this better is, is really just uh, you know crank up the energy and uh, and uh, pr uh, uh, crank up the energy then f be crank up energy you can actually crank up the rate of this process, okay, by by quite a bit. So so at a 100 TeV PP collider, this is a still a very difficult measurement. By the way, it's a, you know even even if you produce two Higgs you. you there are there's lots of decay channels, but none of which is very clean. Okay, so the perhaps the, the best channel is BB bar gamma gamma. But this suffers from the small branching ratio of this Higgs. This is a point two percent. So, you know. But this is probably the cleanest channel. Maybe BB tau tau can do it too, but that's also a small branching ratio. Okay. The, they, then, then then you can try to add other channels. Probably don't really help that much. Um, so at this collider is still a fairly difficult measurement, and the, the rough projection, however, uh, you know, if you uh, this is rate is higher, you can run this, uh, you know, at this collider. This is three inverse Edelbarn at RHC at this collider at uh, um, thirty inverse Edelbarn. Okay, it's about five percent. Okay, if you can do it at the five percent level, I think you can tell these two pictures apart pretty well. Okay, so. Uh, you know, in addition to many motivations for having this, this is one of the, this is an, another sort of a uh, concrete one that, uh, you know, even without uh, seeing any new particles, you, you, you should be able to do this much better. Um, Uh, well, that depends on the parameters. Not very deep. Yeah. <laughs> For the parameters I've seen. Okay. So basically, what you do is you 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 say that my Higgs potential. So my usual Higgs potential looks like this. Right. My usual Higgs potential looks like this, and this term is negative, and this is so so it goes like this, and this is positive goes back. So right. So so but. To, to do that, you, roughly speaking, you do something like this, where this is positive, this is negative, and this pulls it back again. Okay, so, okay, so now, but you already from this, you already see that the next point I, 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 I wanted to make. So, the next point I wanted to make is that if you have the second picture, that, that picture, which you know means that uh, uh, you, I really have a very different picture of electric wave symmetry breaking. I, this term has to be equally important as, as this term, at least. Okay? And this means that the this needs to be small. Okay? On the other hand, you know, for, for the new physics, uh, well, for, there are a couple of questions. First question is you ask, uh, why, uh, how, how can this be? You know, this, if, this, if the new physics is a few hundred GeV, we should have seen it at RHC already. And uh, in general, that may be true, but it's not uh, actually true because uh, if you think about the H physics just cu couples to Higgs, they are very hard to see. If Higgs is the only portal from us to that new physics, then you have to produce everything with Higgs. So you, we take the already not so big Higgs rate, and uh, we, we have to, uh, you know, add on top of that. that that's usually very difficult. Okay. So so at LHC, I have a 200 GeV. Thing couples to, to just couples to Higgs, it's uh, it's trivial to, to hide it. You you have no way to see it. Okay, uh, yeah. If you want Higgs portal, is a very nice good way to hide things from RHC. Uh, okay, now 
the first comment. The second comment is that uh, once you generate this operator, usually it's very difficult to also forbid generating also other operators. We know that integrating out some new physics is very hard to just, just limit myself in, in generating one of these operators, okay? Yeah, so for example, I can have a theory with, uh, with something like this, okay? I add a singlet, it has a, has a coupling like that, okay? So obviously, you know, you can, this is a singlet, S, 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 H, 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 H. So you generate that, okay? But at the same time, you will, you will have a diagram like this. You will have a diagram like this, okay? You say, what does this do? Well, well expand the, the momentum, expanding uh, the momentum out on this propagator. do it here. Expanding the momentum uh, out on this S propagator, you would also generate this, you will also generate this coupling. Okay, sorry, lambda is the mass of the, 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 the S particle, okay? You would also generate that. So what does this do? <laughs> this is just a wave function renormalization of Higgs when the Higgs gets a valve, okay? And, uh, and this just, uh, again, but this wave function renormalization of, uh, of Higgs, this just shifted the Higgs Z coupling, okay? This is just the shift, shifted the Higgs, ah, Higgs Z coupling on the order of, also on the order of V square over lambda square, okay? So, even if at the lepton colliders, I haven't talked about the lepton collider measuring triple Higgs coupling yet, but you already see at the 250 is, is very difficult. Okay, you cannot, so at 250, this is impossible, okay? This is impossible. You know, this may give you a way to measure triple hex. This is only possible, for example, at 500 with ILC. You can you can do this, okay? Um, and uh, what's possible is probably something like this, okay? It's uh, you can you can this correct uh, the, the, at the, at the one loop order, but that that automatically means that the limit is much weaker, okay? If you if that's the only Operator, this gives you like a 30% measurement on the triple Higgs coupling. It's, it's better than nothing, but uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, too good. On the other hand, as I just argued, it's very hard to imagine that you just generate that, okay? So normally you will generate something else too. If you generate this, then this is a very, you no, know, this can be measured very well, okay? It's, it's a shift in Z coupling, as I said, it's 0.2%, okay? In fact, if you, yeah, I think even, even LHC can, can do something. If I literally have the S, just a couple hundred GeV, without doing too much, and the LHC can already see some shift in Z coupling. Okay, but you know, maybe it's more difficult, and so I can, I can, try, to, I can try to arrange that, that this coupling is actually smaller than that. There's some small number in front. Even that, it's very, very hard to hide from, uh, from this, kind, this level of precision. Okay, so, so I think without, uh, let's see, what's, what's my summary of the, the, the picture of a triple Higgs coupling? So there are two things, okay? So, so if I have a 250 circular Higgs factory, okay, uh, you will be able to see a limit, constrain a lot of models, and uh, constrain a lot of most of the parameter space just by measuring Z Higgs coupling. Okay, just if you imagine there's something there to 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 change the triple Higgs coupling. Okay. On the other hand, you know, usually when you build a 250 GeV E plus E minus collider, you 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 dig a big tunnel, right? So, a natural next step is a 100 TeV PP collider. 
Okay, so I just erased it, but a 100 TeV PP collider can really measure the triple phase coupling down to 5%. Okay, so, so this combination can actually, uh, um, you, you know, disentangle that picture very, very well. Um, another route to triple Higgs coupling is to actually build a higher energy lepton collider. Okay, so you five, 500 GeV or even one TeV. So, so that because, because you really wanted to produce uh, at higher energy lepton collider, you really want to produce things like this. Okay, but it, this is a three body process Remember I said that the three body process, the, 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 the threshold actually opens slowly. So even 500 GeV is not really ideal to do this, okay? You, you really want to have a one TeV uh, uh, linear collider, for example. So, so the projection, I, I remember the projection is about 10% to do it at the linear collider, okay? That's another way to get some handle on, on this question. Okay, so, well, I think I should stop here and uh, I will, you know, thanks for listening.